Aloha, Transpac race fans. I'm Dobbs Davis. I'm the technical editor with Seahorse Magazine. I'm also the media wrangler here with the 2021 Transpac race. We are doing our daily analysis videos, and uh, welcome to you all. So those that have uh, been following this race for years know that we've done this for the past several cycles. Um, the purpose of today's show is to uh, just familiarize everybody on how this works. Uh, as you can see on your screen, we are on the YB Tracker browser version of the website. The app version uh, on your phones and tablets looks slightly different. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of the features that the browser version has. So uh, those that uh, really want to look closely at this, I urge you all to use this. Um, I think it looks the same on all different browser software. I personally use Safari because I'm a Mac guy. Uh, so you may see some slight differences depending on the browser, but I, I don't really know, and I think it's all still functional. Anyway, so um, today I'm going to give you a tour of what this is and what the... Um, what the features are. Uh, this is how it opens up. So when from the Transpac website, uh, uh, you will find a tracker and just open that up. And this is what launches uh, is this uh, this page with this layout. Now um, I'm going to show you a few things. First, I'm going to uh, click closed. Uh, these windows over here on the left. We'll get back to them shortly. Uh, there's a social media. Uh, window over here on the right. Uh, we'll get back to that shortly. But here's what we're looking at. This is the race course. Um, as you can see, a rum line, uh, great, well, actually, great circle, I believe, has been uh, drawn here in the red arrows. Uh, the uh, boats on the race course are depicted by little icons of different colors. Uh, we'll show that a little uh, in a few minutes. Um, and the starting point over here at Point Furman, and the finish line over here in Honolulu. Um, there aren't any other marks of the course, so uh, this is a pretty simple race course. Um, what are also uh, interesting to show is up in here are all the various menu bars uh, for uh, features that this tracker software uses. Uh, I think the most common one would be the zoom, zooming in and out. Uh, you can use those, those buttons to do that. We'll do that in a moment. Um, some other features that I'm going to use today are uh, this feature here with toggling the wind data. Um, that uh, is really useful and I'll make a, a lot of use of that. The other one is um, here showing this wind data into the future. So as you slide that bar across, you will see based on this timing, uh, what this particular wind model is uh, is showing for future um, future wind speeds and directions. And I'll, I'll explain that here in a moment. Uh, notice also that time uh, depicted here both in the slide bars of the wind models and the slide bars down here of the positions uh, as well as individual timing on on where uh, boats are in the um, in the YB tracking uh, reporting is in Hawaii Standard Time so uh, a lot of folks that are uh, tuning in uh, are from Hawaii but probably more are on the west coast of the US so make sure that um, when you're looking at this, you're adding uh, three hours or basically subtracting three hours, depending on where you are. But that's a time difference between uh, Pacific Daylight Time and Hawaii Standard Time. Uh, and for all of you in other time zones, um, <laughs> you can reference those uh, from wherever you are. Now, um, we had our first start yesterday. I'm going to just drag. You can use this uh, cursor and use your normal tools to drag this in. And let's uh, zoom in a bit here to see where everybody is. So uh, this is Southern California coast, obviously. Starting point here, one mile off of Point Furman. Uh, this is the, um, the Great Circle route, shortest distance to Hawaii, shown in red. And you can see here's our uh, various boats. We had seven starters yesterday, uh, just a little over 24 hours um, uh, ago, shown in the tracker here. Now that's the other thing to point out is um, the tracker positions for these boats uh, on the public side are four hour delay. So uh, what you're seeing here is what happened four hours ago. Uh, this will revert over to being uh, live when the boats get within 200 miles of the finish line. But for all of you all following here, uh, so for example here, Micmacs, uh, the team from Alaska sailing their Stevens 47. Uh, this position was reported at nine o'clock 
Hawaii Standard Time, so add three to that. That's noon uh, on the West Coast. So uh, just remember remember that. Um, and as you can see, there's some interesting data there, uh, what their lat lawn position is, and also distance to the finish. So how many nautical miles from that position uh, is uh, Diamond Head in Honolulu? Uh, there, there's also other statistics, how many miles have they sailed in the last 24 hours? As you can see, uh, 36 miles is not a lot, and these guys have some catching up to do. Now, why are they here? Um, let's uh, drag this back. Now, one feature as we go back in time is that we lose our wind uh, data. The wind is shown only uh, in, in predictive time, not doesn't go retroactive. So we can sort of infer a few things when you look at these tracks. First of all, everybody got off the start. Now, as you can see by that angle and going upwind on uh, starboard tack, they, um, uh, the wind was around to the west or slightly southwest. Um, so nobody could really stay on that rum line. And, and they were all looking like they were heading toward the west end. That's typically the first uh, first uh, waypoint for everybody, and that's the only mark of the course on on this uh, side of the uh, of the ocean. It's uh, you just have to leave the uh, west end to port. So as they, I'll scroll forward. As they got out there, they were sailing in a nice thermal westerly. They tack away. Um, maybe this is easier to see if I zoom in a little better. Here we go. Okay, so uh, you can see. Some, some tacked earlier. Uh, the Micmax guys decided they they wanted not to get caught on this side of the Catalina. That's a good idea, so they tacked away early. Uh, everybody else uh, laid it or came close to lay it. They got headed. They tacked. Uh, the Macondo guys, for example, looks like they tacked uh, over to port and were laying it on port tack. Um, so everybody's initial strategy was to get around here. Now, with time... And as they get further out and start to lose the influence of the local thermal, uh, things get get lighter. They get uh, more interesting. The boats slow down. You can see here 3.3 knots on Naughty Boo. Uh, the uh, Hoka Olo I'm going to torture this name. Uh, <laughs> Hoka Olo Heia. Sorry, that's not right either. I'll get it, folks, eventually. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm practicing on my Hawaiian. Uh, 3.3 nine knots is not very fast and you can look at that heading so they they're slowing down out here um, getting uh, lighter air uh, light and shifty air and you can see by everybody's course changes and positions and their headings uh, that they're struggling with the big picture here which uh, is the Catalina Eddy the Catalina Eddy I'll, I'll briefly explain um, strong winds come uh, down the California coast and at, at uh, Point Conception here um, it, it creates this back eddy. So strong winds out here, not very strong winds here, and as a result uh, a back eddy develops where you get this counterclockwise circulation uh, here in the Southern California Bight. And when the thermals shut off, as they do at night, uh, and here as you can see this was at, what, 7 o'clock Pacific time, and that's when things start getting light. There's no longer a thermal pumping the boat, so they are now uh, subject to this, this Catalina Eddy, um, and they're going to have to struggle through the night with it. So last night for everybody. Now here we, we see that they've found some favored tacks. They're not going very fast, but at least going a consistent direction for a few hours. 2.7 knots, not very fast. 2.4, uh, 1.8, um, 4.7. Those guys have a little pressure there. Um, so they're seeking pressure. They're seeking... A couple of strategies here. Do you stay as close as you can to the Great Circle, the, sh the, the shortest distance to Hawaii, and minimize the, the miles you sail? Or do you think uh, in your weather modeling it's better to be somewhere else just to seek um, a higher amount of breeze? And we can see this happening here with our friends on uh, Nalu 5. Uh, Mark Ashmore and his team uh, are, are uh, making their second attempt to get to Hawaii. They they were at, at uh, actually a little further offshore uh, in the last race in 2019. They ran into some problems with leaking in the boat, and so they had to turn back. So they're really uh, motivated uh, to make it to Hawaii this time, um, and uh, and it's a great team. Now Mark told me uh, that they have a pretty high-powered um, 
uh, internet connection uh, ability on their boat this time. And uh, he's, I think he might be making use of it uh, in this decision here because they're breaking away from everybody else. And if you look at their track, they're actually sailing at 90 degrees to the direction of Hawaii. And, and, and doing that indicates that they're making a, a pretty big decision because uh, they're, they're going for something that, that is worth that amount of time and effort. Look, look how long they sail away from the rum line. Uh, and away from the Great Circle short distance route. So they're, they're heading, heading for something to the south. And maybe in here they started to get it because uh, their speed picked up, 4.7. The other guys were going a little bit slower, 0 0.9, uh, 0.8. These guys, 2.9, 2.1. Uh, the fastest boat, uh, Cecil Rossi's boat, 1.7. So they're down here on the low road. Uh, find it found some pressure. They uh, clearly uh, looked at some weather modeling and uh, did a little bit of routing using their software, and uh, are, are are throwing their all their eggs in this basket. Because look at this, folks, they're really really jumping out. So um, and this uh, time of day was 5:30 in Hawaii, so 8:30 in the morning. So the morning sked for them was going to look pretty good. Um, now, if we, we fast forward to where things are now and uh, zoom out, we can see this, the, this fleet, um, it, let's go to now, even just 24 hours, a um, little more than 24 hours into the race, they are pretty spread out. And this, again, is due to that Catalina Eddy, where do you want to be positioned? Uh, the Nalu guys... Went, went for something down here to get out of that eddy. It looks like they, they, they won that, uh, that part of the race. Right now, they're leading overall in corrected time scoring. Um, and although uh, these guys on the larger uh, FAR 57 uh, are, have, a, have a shorter distance to Hawaii, so in, in overall uh, distance left to race, these guys are in the lead. But again, they rate much faster. Um, so... Nalu 5, Cal 40, classic Transpac boat, is uh, certainly showing showing what they can do on this course thus far. Uh, let's see, I'm going to scroll out now and just discuss the weather a little bit. This um, toggle that I have on, I've got two selections, basically. Um, we've got uh, a choice of no overlay at all, but that's kind of boring. That's just bathymetry. Uh, and geography, we want to see what the wind is doing and how that might affect the strategies of these teams and what what they see in the future. The other option is uh, predict wind, but but here, um, windy is pretty good because the graphics here um, are really useful. Uh, the colors are indications of wind pressure, and the scale for that is down here at the bottom of your screen, at the bottom of the, of the browser window. Um, these blues are areas you want to avoid. They're light air, and it starts going green right around uh, 9 or 10 knots. Green is uh, 10, 15, 20 knots. And then uh, orange uh, and, and uh, a lighter green is, uh, is getting up between 20, 25 knots. So as you can see um, up here in the coast, strong coastal winds. This is quite normal. And as you can see by these moving arrows, these are the vectors uh, wind, uh, wind direction um, and uh, you can see how it wraps around here. So at, uh, where it intersects the race course is, of course, where these uh, entries have to make their decisions of where they want to go. So uh, close reaching here, upwind. This is normal. You can see the, the start of uh, in these vectors and the way they're wrapping around, and when it gets light, they can actually twist back on themselves and cause that uh, eddy-like behavior. Uh, but as soon as they punch out into this stuff, which they're uh, four hours from now, you know, they probably are starting, they're probably actually right now somewhere in this area, and they're starting to get the effect of these uh, strong coastal winds. So for the next day or two, uh, as we look ahead, that, that wind field seems to move a little closer to the coast. Maybe uh, it'll, it'll get to them uh, a little further. This is uh, 5 o'clock in the morning, uh, Pacific Daylight Time. And then later, actually, while the breeze does decrease in, in, in strength up here um, along the coast, uh, it does actually spread a little bit further toward the coast uh, down here where it intersects the, uh, the Great Circle. So 
Um, everybody should certainly be in this by early morning, and as they get further this way, uh, certainly they'll um, uh, they'll have su uh, sufficient pressure um, to uh, to get down the track. So this is looking like a pretty good start for this fleet. A little bit of light air last night getting out of that eddy, um, but overall it looks pretty solid for them in the next day or two. Um, the other wind model, I'll just go through this briefly, is uh, is this one called Predict Wind. This shows also uh, the wind, but not in that fancy graphic way that Predict Wind shows it. It shows it as individual vectors um, spaced out on this on this grid. Uh, why is this here? Well, the grid spacing is much tighter, showing much, uh, and the model has many, uh, many more um, uh, vectors to it. And in order to appreciate that, we have to zoom in more. So let's do that. And when we do that, in the grid spacing, you can easily see here that, that Catalina Eddy that I was talking about. See that counterclockwise rotation? Unfortunately, these guys are going right through the middle of it, and our at this point, the race course is, uh, is centered in that. So the challenge for them was getting through that, getting out of it, getting punched out. Um, last year, uh, the last starters on the race course uh, got caught in a whopper of an eddy out here uh, and took them over a day to punch out of it. Um, that, was, that really slowed down last year's start. Uh, we'll see how this develops in time. In fact, if we uh, using this tool, you can see how it evolves. So this is... Uh, um, this is actually this afternoon. You can see how things line up in the afternoon because the thermal, uh, this, I'm not a meteorologist, but I'm just sort of interpreting this. I think the thermal uh, helps uh, override that uh, Catalina uh, eddy effect and you get more of a uh, thermal westerly here. But then as you go for, further forward in time, you see how it starts to, to die off and go back to that rotation as the uh, influence of the of the thermal uh, dissipates. So, um, but nonetheless, uh, so a little bit of pain, but uh, um, it's, it's, I think it's going to be fine. If we go uh, forward in time, looking towards um, our next starters are in uh, not till Friday. Uh, frankly, I think that's too far away to make good use of this, but it's likely they may have a similar effect for that next wave uh, uh, when they start on Friday. But in any case, I wanted to show you all use of this tool. Um, and that's it for today. Um, I, I try to do these about 8 to 10 minutes just so it's not too long. Uh, and, um, and I wanted to give you an idea of where the tools are for, for use of the tracker. So when we um, go into further shows, you all are familiar with it. Um, and, um, and thanks for tuning in. Uh, I look forward to... Having you on the next show, I don't know if I'll do one tomorrow, but for sure the following day, uh, yes, we'll, we'll do another show just showing where this fleet is and, uh, and the start of the next fleet and looking ahead for what they have in store. So for now, uh, and for Transpac Yacht Club, I'm Dobbs Davis. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.